really important forum today. Um, and uh, now the clock is ticking towards Paris. Uh, let me give you a little bit of perspective on what we think may be possible from a Hong Kong perspective. Uh, as we heard from the previous speakers, uh, and we have quite a gap ahead of us between the level of ambition of governments and the likelihood of hitting some meaningful climate targets. I've got a couple of slides as well. But I'll, I'll go one piece of research I've, I've seen recently says that if governments take their existing commitments and implement them, we'll be looking at about a 3.7 degrees Celsius world uh, by late century, which is, uh, from an adaptation perspective, very, very, very expensive to try and adapt your way out of. So clearly, more levels of ambition are needed. Uh, we're hoping that, of course, uh, come next March, more ambition will be there from governments around the world. We heard from the EU this morning, uh, a new level of ambition for 2030, 40% uh, emissions cuts, renewable energy targets, energy efficiency targets. Uh, and of course, cities also have a very big role to play as well. Uh, Hong Kong, of course, that doesn't have its own standing uh, uh, within the NFCC, or to the central government, but Hong Kong has a very unique opportunity uh, because we are a developed economy in, inside an emerging economy. Uh, we're a city that regulates our power utilities uh, as well as can make contributions like energy efficiency and the built environment as well. So there are uh, opportunities abound uh, for the city. I'm just going to run through very quickly a little bit, a bit of a, a vision for where we uh, could be going or where we should be going as a city uh, over the next decades. Right now, Hong Kong government does have commitments for the next years uh, to re reach an energy uh, or a CO2 intensity target at 50 to 60 uh, percent. That will be mainly based on switching from some uh, coal to gas. Um, but the question is, what happens in the preceding decades after that? Current predictions are for an increase in the amount of energy. This is for electricity, which is about 70% of our emissions as a city, uh, for the uh, emissions within the city. Uh, as we can see, there's going to be an increase over the next decades uh, if we continue on business as usual. Um, the question is, how do we actually start reducing down our emissions? One of the big areas and one of the big focuses in the city, of course, is on energy efficiency and demand side management. A generally agreed global number is we can cut our um, energy that we need without sacrificing in a major way our lifestyles uh, by about half uh, over the next decades. And that, that's going to require some real commitments uh, here in Hong Kong, more than we've seen today. We need to get about a 1-2% to 2 reduction in consumption, even as our population, our GDP, is growing uh, slightly over the next decades. Um, when it comes to the supply side, which is that green on the bottom here, how are we going to actually meet our energy needs? Well, of course, our Dia Bay nuclear plant um, is scheduled for closure by 2035. Uh, and our coal uh, generation, our coal generating units, step by step, uh, should be phased out over the next years. An existing rough policy of government is to rely heavily on gas. Um, if we didn't deal with demand side management, our emissions would increase over the next decades if we only depended upon gas. So clearly we need a more holistic approach to reducing our emissions. Um, we think that renewables uh, can actually plug uh, much of that gap. Some gas in the system, but a heavier, heavier investment in local renewables, of which there is virtually uh, no investment right now, uh, and eventually over the longer term, some imports of renewable energy from China uh, could be an, well, would be an important part of our energy mix. As we've seen for mainland China, when mainland China commits puts targets in for building renewables, it, well, it always exceeds its own targets. Uh, and the big rene biggest renewable energy boom, uh, uh, boom globally, or for example, for onshore wind, uh, one of the big ones is in mainland China right now. So this lays out a little bit of a, a rough vision uh, for where we need to be over the next 30 to 40 years. So what does this mean for Hong Kong? It's all okay to have a vision, but you actually need two things. You need uh, the technological innovation and you need the enabling policy environment in order for that to happen. Um, and if that can happen, uh, we could see massive emissions reductions, 92% uh, uh, below 1990 levels. Um, if we took, for example, uh, a scenario like this for our electricity market. So quite uh, some considerable uh, cuts in emissions. So what kind of policies would enable us to bring those cuts into place? Uh, of course, demand side management and renewable energy uh, are important, but what's really important is targets. Uh, as we again, we heard from the EU, 
um, very specific targets to be met for demand side management, very specific target for the percentage of renewable energy in the mix, uh, need to be put in place for the city. Uh, and as we heard from another speaker this morning, we need long-term stability in terms of those targets and the policy environment so that the business community uh, knows the environment in which it's operating. Um, other examples of policies and uh, approaches that we can use in the city, smart metering, uh, making it uh, 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 easier to deal with demand side as well as supply side issues, making it easier for our power utilities to deal with peak uh, load issues. Uh, and a periodical tariff system so that we're paying for the energy that we need uh, at the price that it's available uh, as well. Um, we should, we believe, build our offshore wind farms. They've been on the drawing board for a number of years now. We'd really like to see them go forward. They can make a contribution, um, uh, as can some kind of a feed-in tariff scheme, particularly for uh, small-scale distributed generation uh, uh, of solar photovoltaics can also make a contribution to the city. We shouldn't wait two decades. The technology is there today. The, uh, the prices have come down drastically in the last five years. All we need now is the right policy signals to be able to build them. Um, and lastly, a review of the permit, permitted rate of return as well for power utilities uh, would also be a very good thing. Uh, a raft of policies along these lines, uh, along with a more ambitious target for cutting CO2 emissions. If the Hong Kong government could take that to Paris, we think that would be uh, very inspiring for other cities around the world. Uh, it would set a very good example uh, for mainland China, for Asia Pacific as well. Uh, and so that's uh, what we think is the homework that needs to be done over the next months so that when Hong Kong is on the world stage, uh, we have something world class to offer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.